Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, I've been doing my Reusable Space program series and uh, I've actually run into a problem. I just launched my four ion powered probes. Uh, unfortunately, they each have four hours worth of fuel on them and uh, I only have a limited amount of time to play. So I've actually struck at a moment where my uh, plans are rather tedious to watch. So instead, I thought I'd go back and discuss something that had previously alluded to or had had been covered in in previous episodes. The fir first time I um first episode of the series, people said, "Oh, go on and build a space elevator." And and oh, very funny, but you know, when you see my uh my contribution to the YouTube station, uh, the hazmat lab hanging on the end of a long girder in space, it's kind of natural to think that that idiotic construction, you know, could be longer, right? I mean, in case you're not up with current lingo, a space elevator also is referred to as space bridges, space lifts, space ladders, beanstalks, skyhooks, or orbital towers. In simple terms, they are really tall towers that extend out from a planet's equator thousands of kilometers up beyond into geostationary orbit. And you can use this to transport payloads into orbit without using any of those dangerous, noisy, and inefficient rockets. I mean, the idea of such a structure originally came with like Konstantin Tislovsky in the, the late 19th century, and he imagined something like the Eiffel Tower going up to geostationary orbit with the load kind of held under, you know, compressive, cap you know, using compressive forces, right? And that was, well, that, that was uh, interesting enough. Um, but if you're trying to build something like that in Kerbal Space Program, you run into this problem that I'm showing here that you can't move anything beyond the top of the vehicle assembly building. So kind of I put that on there and that is as far as I can go. But you see, I've gone off to the side. What I can do is grab this and now move it all the way up to the top as quickly as I can and as tediously as possible. Now I can then go over and again, this is another slow scroll up and down the vehicle assembly building. We can grab this, stick it on top, and get it in the middle, of course. And then, again, using page up to go all the way up to the top so that we can get around this, we can stick this on there. See, in previous versions, you could actually move the command capsule outside the, the um, vehicle assembly building, whereas in this one, they basically force you to keep the main root capsule inside the building. So. Here we have an example of this tower that's uh, maybe 100 meters tall. And you see uh, it looks tall-ish. It's a long way from going into orbit, obviously. But uh, it's kind of cool. You've got all that stuff sitting exactly on top of that single capsule there. But as you look carefully at it, you see that it is starting to fall over and bend. And you see it's actually bringing the entire capsule over with it and does a pretty good job of smashing up the engines on my nice little eagle carrier there. Yeah, um, so yeah, the notion of a tower that stands on its own under compression just doesn't fit any of the materials. Like, if, if you were to build it out of the Eiffel Tower type materials, it would weigh more than the planet Earth, right? Because each layer has to support the layer above it. Anyway, in the category of uh, here's one I prepared earlier, here is a model that I put together earlier, which has uh, something like 140 girders stacked vertically. And you can see that right away this thing starts to collapse. And it does so in this characteristic kind of wavy mat motion. It's pretty cool, actually. Uh, or it would be pretty cool if you were not standing underneath it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, basically, you know, you can't build anything huge like that because it will any deviation from the, from the center will cause it to collapse. But that's fine because the classic design for a space elevator was actually formulated in the 60s by some more Russians who basically, instead of having it supported like a tower uh, supporting its weight under compression, it would be a cable strung between two points held under tension. So yeah, we can take the um, the model we have, and what we're going to do is basically flip it upside down. And this will turn it into a you know a tower under tension. It'll be an inverted tower, and of course, after we drag it up to the top at the speed of uh, glaciers, we can go and there we go, reach the top. 
we can now find the struts, the, the landing, not the landings, the launch clamps, and attach them carefully to this thing. Uh, if I can get it roughly centered. Nope, I, apparently my ineptitude knows no bounds. There we go. So now we can launch this and see what happens to this cable under tension. And so there we go, we see the capsule altitude is uh, 446, which means I kind of overestimated the length. But yeah, as soon as it loads, the physics kicks in and this cable starts swaying around like uh, some sort of crazy thing. Because what's happening is the tension is pulling these joints apart. They kind of collide with the surface and this thing wobbles around like a, a nutty thing. Uh, it's very hard to move the camera anywhere sensibly. Uh, the center of mass seems to move. I clicked on the EVA button and a, a pilot gets out. And watch what happens. This cable is swaying around like a crazy thing. And then suddenly, as I reach a certain altitude, Okay, well, the Kerbal dies, but the thing stops swinging and just stops there rock solid. And what's happened is the physics has unloaded for this model. The model is still loaded, but no physics is being calculated on it, so it becomes a rigid body. Now, even with no physics being calculated, I was still curious as to how strong these girder sections were. So I built this kind of test rig. And uh, really the problem was that the test rig would spontaneously destroy itself, but the girders themselves would remain resolutely unbroken. You can actually see there's like an air gap between segments of this thing. So really we have no idea what the braking strain is. Uh, at some point you're going to hang so many of these girders back to back that the braking force will be so much just from the weight of the girders that the thing will snap. And this is a problem with regular uh, designs for orbital towers. To build a tower around Earth you need materials with huge strength to weight ratios and uh, that's why most tower designs are now looking at carbon nanotubes which are very light and incredibly strong. But of course in Kerbal Space Program we aren't really dealing with reality so you can actually build a launch tower which is 82 kilometers high. <laughs> and so here we have us falling next to a launch tower. You can see the tip of it up there, 600, 700 meters. And what we're going to encounter in a moment is another one of those arbitrary limits that is placed on us by the engine. As you see, 2 kilometers, 2.3, 2.4, 2.5, and it magically disappears. So the other reason why you can't build an orbital tower in Kerbal Space Program is there is a two and a half kilometer model load limit. It won't load a model unless its center of mass is within 2.5 kilometers. Now you pretty much have to make these giant towers by hand editing .craft files and um, there is much potentiality for things to not go wrong or not go right. Um, there's one interesting example I want to highlight here where I've got 82 kilometer tower that when it loads physics it spontaneously destroys your ship and sends it off at 50 kilometers per second. Of course when you get things right you can in fact use this to get objects into orbit that wouldn't normally work. You see this one barely has any vertical motion when I fire the rockets. Uh, and it only gets to go up because the gravity has dropped a little at this altitude. <laughs> and normally this thing would not get any airtime until it had burned some fuel. But being out of the atmosphere, it, it is able to immediately pick up speed and get up velocity, and that's good. But uh, it's a long way from being what an ideal um, space elevator is. You see, one of the nice things about the space elevator is that once you go beyond geostationary orbit, you are now moving faster than orbital velocity. And as you go further and further out, you uh, can just let go and you find yourself on a stable orbit around the planet. And as you go even further out, it, it can happen that your the rotational velocity in the reference frame is faster than the escape velocity, so you can escape the planet. Now, for the planet Earth, if you have your far end of your... Um, tower out around 144,000 kilometers, you can let go of that there. And if you do it at the right time, you will find yourself flying out to Jupiter where you can get a gravity assist out to infinity. Now, in, if you could do it in Kerbal Space Program, you would run into a problem because you need to get out to about 10,000 kilometers to get the to get yourself enough velocity to escape out to Joule. And that becomes a problem because at 10,000 kilometers, you are crossing into the sphere of influence of the moon. So the top of your tower isn't stable 
and bad things probably happen when you have an object that can cross between the sphere of influence of two objects. Anyway, the whole point of this was, you know, space elevators, great idea in practice, they're not going to work in Kerbal Space Program. But hey, you know, if you mess around with this stuff, you're bound to find some weird, broken physics, um, such as this. Anyway, I am Scott Manley. I will get back to you with reusable space program as soon as I can. But until then, fly safe.